Welcome back to Multiversal Studios. In this video we'll be discussing whether Yugi Moto is the real king of games or if he's a fraud. Now before we jump into the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Alright cool, let's get started. Season 5 Episode 52 The Final Duel Part 4 In this episode Yugi gets the better of a Tem with his gold sarcophagus spell card, which negates the effect of the card identical to the one placed inside the box, which was of course, Monster Reborn. Yugi defeats Atem and sets his soul free. And from that moment onwards, Yugi was known as the new King of Games. But my question to you guys is, does he deserve it though? Well, you're about to find out. However, it's really important to first establish that Atem alone was the undisputed king of games before Yugi took on that mantle. Now for those of you who would like to argue otherwise, it is clear to see when Atem is dueling without Yugi, his skill and ability isn't affected and remains constant, leading me to believe that Yugi doesn't really add anything when it comes to the dueling aspect of the game. Now a few examples of this is Season 1 Episode 13. Atem faces off against Bikora in a shadow game where Yugi is trapped inside the Dark Magician. However, regardless, Atem still overpowers Bikora. And then again, Season 4, Episode 35, Atem faces off against Darts when Yugi's soul had already been captured by the Great Leviathan. Last but not least, Season 3, Episode 41, The Battle City Finals, Atem vs Marik. Yugi is literally extracted out of Atem's body during a shadow game. And these opponents aren't your regular duelists, they're extremely challenging opponents, and Atem is victorious every time. So even though they technically shared the same body, my point is, Atem has proven, with or without Yugi, to be the true king of games. But now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about why I think it might have been too soon for Yugi to take on the title of king of games after the defeat of Atem. Now if we go back to when Yugi first solved the Millennium Puzzle, Yugi's spirit merged with Atem's. And from that day on, Yugi took a back seat, especially when it came to any kind of game or threatening situation, and allowed Atem to take charge. So this gave Yugi ample time to observe and analyse Atem's dueling style and strategies. Watching Atem duel opponent after opponent, Atem's techniques became second nature to Yugi, almost like an instinct. To Yugi, Atem's moves would be predictable, which is exactly what we saw happen several times in the final duel between Atem and Yugi. Taya even said it herself. He must have had this plan from the beginning. I guess after spending so much time with the Pharaoh, Yugi knew exactly what he would play. But saying that, you have to give credit where it's due. Yugi came up with an unprecedented strategy to destroy all three Egyptian god cards, which is something no one has ever done before, right? Reveal trap card! Pyramid of Light! He actually did it! But all jokes aside, it was pretty impressive. But I've always wondered, how did Yugi come up with a strategy to defeat all three Egyptian god cards? And that's when it hit me. He did it by watching Atem do it first. Atem has systematically defeated each Egyptian god card with similar strategies. Season 2 episode 18, Marek sends strings after Atem, who had Sly for the Sky Dragon in his deck. This almost resulted in Atem losing the duel, however, Atem countered back, creating an infinite loop using the power of Slifer's second mouth to be Marek's undoing. Which was coincidentally the exact tool Yugi used to take down each of the Egyptian god cards. Season 4 Episode 2 The Egyptian god cards were stolen by Darts' henchmen, and Atem went face to face against his own obelisk. A duel in which Atem devised a unique strategy to take it down, using the Magnet Warriors Alpha, Beta and Gamma, which again, coincidentally with the exact cards that Yugi used as part of his strategy in taking down the gods. And lastly, the Winged Dragon of Ra, Season 3 Episode 42 The Battle City Finals Atem faced Ra at its full potential, revealing all of its hidden abilities, leaving no stone unturned. So you can clearly see Atem paved the way for Yugi to even be able to develop a strategy of this magnitude in the first place. But like I said, you have to give Yugi credit where it's due. By the end of the anime, Yugi became what I like to call an anti-Atem. 
meaning Yu-Gi-Oh's attempts perfect counter in every shape and form, down to pretty much memorizing every card in the Pharaoh's deck. And this was necessary, Yu-Gi needed to defeat Atem in order to set him free. Think about it guys, winning is easy for the Pharaoh, but being able to accept defeat is probably the greatest test of his character there is. So Yugi had to take that role. So what I'm basically saying is, Yugi beating a Tem, someone he's been preparing to duel subconsciously for a good portion of his life, isn't enough in my opinion to be automatically called the next king of games. Now I'm not saying Yugi could never become the king of games, he definitely has the potential and the first hand experience via a Tem. And let's not forget his grandpa, who was the previous king of games and taught Yugi everything he knew. So it's clear Yugi has everything inside him necessary to become the greatest. But just defeating a Tem alone, in my opinion, isn't enough to prove that. Now beating Seto Kaiba in the next tournament, or even proving himself to be a duelist who can overcome any challenge, now that might be enough to convince me that Yugi has finally surpassed a Tem and left his shadow. Which brings us to the Yu-Gi-Oh movie, The Dark Side of Dimensions, in which Yugi had every opportunity to do so. Now this was the perfect movie to show off Yugi's skills, a shining ray of hope in order to solidify Yugi's new title. And it started off so well, we see Yugi's first duel against Aigami, in which Yugi dominated, sending Aigami flying, and all is good with the world. And then comes a controversial duel versus Seto and Yugi, and from there everything just goes downhill. Now, beating Seto is a crucial step towards earning the title of King of Games, going back to the very first episode in which Attempt took his first step towards that title. Now if you saw the duel, it ended in a very confusing manner. Seto Kaiba had 2500 life minutes left and Yugi attacked Seto directly with a Dark Magician, bringing Seto down to 100 life points instead of 0. And at that exact moment, everything was shut down by Aigami, who was consumed by the evil in the Millennium Ring. Now the controversy here is because Seto had one face down card when attacked and looked up at Yugi and smiled. So naturally the assumption was that Seto was still in control of the duel and hadn't lost. However, if you watch this video by TGS Anime, they do a great job in analysing what the face down card could be. And after following the duel, they determined the face down card was polymerization, which was the only spell or trap left in Seto's hand. Now if that was the case, Yugi was assured that victory. But the very fact that they left him clearly on 100 life points in the movie, instead of giving Yugi the clear victory, shows to me that he wasn't ready to surpass the giant shadow left by Atem. Now if you compare the duels between Atem and Seto, the outcome has never been left a mystery. The smile Seto displayed after the attack was also analysed in the video, and they determined that it was a sign of respect towards Yugi, as he realised Yugi was the greatest duelist. But then if that was really the case, why not give Yugi the clear win? Why go out of your way to show Seto with 100 life points left? Why leave such an important moment in Yugi's career up to audience interpretation? Which kind of makes me feel even Takahashi wasn't fully ready to publicly allow Yugi to defeat Seto, therefore implying Yugi wasn't ready for the title of King of Games. Now this is further backed up in the last duel where Yugi is facing off against Aigami one final time. Yugi is pressed and pushed to his limit, and before he drew his last card, he passes out, in which Atem appears to save the day. Now we've seen this before, back to the very start of his career, back in Duelist Kingdom against Pegasus. Yugi can no longer handle the stress of being in the shadow game, and passes out. And in that situation also, Atem had to take over. Now the duel against Pegasus was the duel which really solidified Atem's name in the dueling scene as the true king of games, beating the literal creator of duel monsters. So Yugi passing out in the final scene is almost reminiscent of that moment, allowing Atem to once again overshine him. Now as epic as this scene was, I think it did a lot to undermine Yugi's dueling ability, almost passively implying that no matter how hard it gets, Atem will always be there to bail Yugi out of a tough situation. Now to me the true king of games is someone who is able to overcome any challenge no matter how great or impossible. Evidence of this is from the feats Atem has accomplished throughout the anime. But from what I can see from the dark side of dimensions, when it was Yugi's turn to step up, he just wasn't able to do so. So in conclusion, I do really hope in the future we get to see more of Yugi unlocking his true potential. Now I can imagine a lot of you watching this video might disagree with a lot of the things I talked about. If you do, leave a comment, I really want to hear your opinions on the matter. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys.